Who doesn't need more time? Today I'm going to show you how you can collect your data and have more time to do things you enjoy. Hi, I'm Rachel from the Behavior Check-In. So if you don't know me, I am a special education teacher in Mississippi and I work primarily with behavior. So today I'm going to show you a complete game changer, how to collect your behavior data in Google Forms. It's super simple, so I'm just going to show you how to do it and make sure you stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can set it up in a graph, which totally will save you time. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how first to create a Google form and then I'll show you how you can interpret the data from it. So to create a Google form just to get there, um, you can either find it up in your waffle, it'll be added, so or you can go in and just search Google forms in Google. And when you're logged into your account, you can go in and, and um, create one. So when you want to create one, you can just go up here and click the add button and that'll take you into your Google forms. So when I create my Google form, I usually use the initials of the students. So we're just going to call this student uh, JJ. He's just John Jones or something. All right. I use the initials just for privacy purposes, just in case, you know, I don't want anybody to see the kid's information. It's just as personal. So I can go in here and put behavior data. And then I can click on up here and it'll just save the initials for me. And I like that. So it's auto saved, like everything in Google. So you don't have to worry about losing it. So then for the very first question, I'm always going to create date because we want to know what the date is for what we're doing. That's very important for keeping track of the data. And I'm going to click this little button over here because I want it required. So whether I'm putting it in or someone else is putting it in for me, like one of my pairs, then I would go ahead and make sure this is required so it's not forgotten. If I want to add more, I will go ahead and hit the add button right here. All right, so I'll go ahead and put the first goal in. So use, uh, how about respectful language, okay? So that would be my first one. Now I have several different options to pick from on how I want to do this. So I can do linear scale and that's kind of like a rating scale. But for me, for what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and do check boxes because I'm looking at it after the fact. I've already looked at their daily logs. So I'm going to go ahead and just be putting in their percentage for the day. That way I can graph their data. So I'm just going to go ahead and list in the criteria that they can get for everything um, throughout the day, just so I can check it real quick. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Okay, so I've put in all, I'm sorry, I can't talk today. I put in all of the different percentages they could have. Now, I didn't list his percent, I just listed it as a straight number. So I don't want to do this again because that takes a lot of work. Now, I'm going to mark it as required, but I'm going to show you how I can duplicate it so I don't have to type all of those numbers in again. So I'm just going to hit duplicate. And that is another one. So I can do the same thing here if the percentages are the correct, depending on the goal, or I can just delete things if I need to. So the next one I'm going to put maybe stay in seat. Now you can make these as long or short as you want to. There's no cutoff. I like to keep things short just because I'm doing these quickly. I have a lot of kids at the end of the day and I just don't want to have tons of stuff I need to read through. But you can go back in and edit this if you want to make it shorter or longer. And then of course, if you want to delete things, if you don't need all these percentages anytime, you can just remove. It makes it really easy. So then I'll go ahead and create one more. And then... We'll just say hands and feet to self. And these are all of our target behaviors that we're working on. Now, as you can see, you can simply do the same thing if you were doing an academic goal, whatever is easiest for you. But just for this one, we're doing behavior. But the same thing would apply. And I like check boxes, but honestly, you can do the same thing with um, 
multiple choice as well. And as fa in fact, if you decide that you don't like the check boxes, you get in there and you just don't like how it works for you, you can always change this, real simple, to multiple choice. Now, and when the reason that that matters is when you go in here later, um, you'll show how it graphs for you. It shows you different graphing options. It doesn't really matter to me because I'm going to ultimately be turning this into a line graph anyway, just because I want to see the trend line. And I think it's easier to interpret the graph in terms of growth that way. It's easier to explain it if you have to bring it into an IEP meeting or whatever. So I like to do that, but you can do multiple choice check boxes. Linear scale, really whatever you want. Well, actually I wouldn't do linear scale, but multiple choice or text boxes would be the best if you want to make a line graph. So we're done with that. Now if we want to put the data in, that's real easy to do. What we want if we want it live when we put our data in, we're just going to go up here to the little preview eyeball. And now we can go ahead and start putting stuff in. So we can pick our date. We'll just start at the beginning of the week. And we can just put in what he got for the day, 92, 83, 75 is what he got. And then I'll just go ahead and do that for the rest of the week so I can show you what that data looks like. All right, so we're submitted all of our data. Now, if I want to go back and see what my responses look like, I can go ahead and just click up here in responses. And what I like is if you look up here, you can already see that you have each day the data was taken. I like this feature because if I were to forget, or if my pair were to forget, or the kid was absent or whatever, I can just pop right there. I can see that. Um, I know what days we were taken and I know that it's done. And I like that for just for me. I'm very thorough. I always live in fear that my dad is not going to be correct enough or the way that it's supposed to be. So this just gives me extra assurance that I know I did it and I didn't forget it. So I like that feature. So for the tech, when you do the check boxes, this is the graph that it produces for you. So you can see this information here. Now, if you do the multiple choice, then this is the graph that you see here, okay? And it's just showing you which percentage you got and then what color it was. And um, I'm gonna show you, because really to me, it's really hard to sit there and show that to a parent and really explain if the child's doing better or not. So that's why I like to make line graphs. All right, guys, here's my favorite part where you get to actually look at the data that you've collected over time and interpret it. So why do we take this data? We take this data so we can see student growth. We can see what areas we need to improve upon and we can learn better ways to target our behavioral interventions and our instruction. So make sure that you're going in there and looking and you're using the data that helps you. All right, guys, so to go in and make a line graph, we're going to go in, make sure you're in your responses like I showed you, go up to the green view responses sheet. And um, when you're first starting, it's gonna ask you to create a spreadsheet um, and you'll click yes. I've already created a spreadsheet with this, so it didn't ask me to do that this time. So if I wanna go ahead and create a line graph. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to highlight these options right here. Then I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to insert a chart. I can go in here. I don't want to look at the column chart. I want a line graph. So I'm going to go up here to um, my drop down menu. And I'm just going to scroll until I find line chart. And then I can kind of change everything around and customize it any way I want to. So if I want to go up to series, I can go down here, I can add error bars, I can add data labels, I can add a trend line. And as you can see, this makes it a lot clearer to understand if you're having someone look at it. Um, if you want to go ahead and change over in the titles, you can, it's just real easy. And you can do that if you want to change up here as well. And I really like that, that you have those options to do those things. Now, another thing that I love <laughs> that I think is so helpful is I can go up here to the three dots. I click on those and I can go move chart to own sheet. I can click on that. It's going to give me a new sheet. I can name this right over here. So I can just name it after the goal. I could put goal one or you use respectful language, 
whatever I want and I have that chart and I can send that chart to somebody else, copy that chart, put it in a Word document, publish it, share it to somebody's email. If I click on this, it'll give me the option to pick an email address and send it to whoever wants to see it. So maybe if you have a student who doesn't bring home their charts to their parents, then if your parent agrees, you can possibly send this through email, whatever works best for your situation and whatever your school allows. So what I also like about this is if I go back over here into form responses and another day passes by and I go in and I fill out my form and I put everything in like I just did before. All right, and I just add another data point. Then I can go in there to my chart. Boom, I have another date, another data point. And I think that's really awesome. You have a continual graph and you can see how the students do and you can see on what days we did really well, what days didn't, what happened on the 22nd. Maybe the student has a rough time when they know they're going home for the weekend. Maybe they didn't get what they needed or they didn't get enough sleep. You can kind of chart all those things and figure it out and target your intervention for what you need. All right, guys, if you're anything like me, you spent way too much time overthinking your data, trying to add it all up, trying to interpret it. And the great thing about Google Forms is it kind of breaks everything down, puts it in one place and saves you so much time. And who doesn't need more time? I feel like as a teacher, we're always stressed for time. So if I have something that makes things easier for me, I'm 100% on board with that because time is precious. I'm not only a teacher, I'm a mom. And so I need that time back. And Google Forms has really been a huge time saver for me. Another thing I love about Google Forms is it has made it so that my data is more accurate. Looking at things like behavior, we really want to make sure that it is as accurate as possible so we can target our intervention. Now, I really love using the QR code because it just makes it so easy. I put it on the bottom of my lanyard and I'm able to just use my phone and go in and just get the data that I need need and do it whenever it's convenient when I have a quick moment I'm always taking data on my phone I found that's the easiest way for me I know sometimes people like to do it with an iPad or you can just do it on a computer and you can kind of just bookmark a spot on your computer and you can pop in and put that data in there whatever is work easiest for you whatever works for you but I have found that the QR code either sticking it on the students folder or sticking it on the door with initials so that we're protecting their privacy um, or or doing it with the initials on the lanyard. Those have always been the best ways of getting the most accurate real-time data. All right, if you found this video helpful, make sure you like it, giving it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way, every time I post new information, you will get it and you're not gonna miss a thing. I really appreciate you for tuning into this video. Subscribing and liking really supports my channel. As always, thank you for tuning in my channel and I'll catch you in the next one.